we've got two games tomorrow, so mindful of that as well. We'll be in and out. Mindful of how cold it is, we'll be in and out. So although we've given ourselves a window from six to eight, we're probably only going to run for no more than an hour. Try to get it within the hour as well. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you're, you're all working hard. Some of you will want a, a well-earned drink after today as well. So we'll get you back into the warm as quick as possible. Just there, very quickly before we, we get going, um, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Warren Grieve. I'm the technical director here for the ACT. Um, in terms of background, I've now been in Canberra for the, the last two years, um, and we've seen some significant changes in terms of where the FFA um, have come from and where they're now at in terms of the updated national curriculum and the impact and effect that that now has on our own programs within our federation here at Capital Football. Though noting that there are some teams from overseas, the majority of the teams that are taking part in this year's Kanga Cup are from around the rest of Australia, uh, and I'm sure within your own federations and states that you're actually working in, there'll be um, developments that'll be taking place in relation to the FFA as well, uh, in terms of how we move forward nationally and more, having more of a national approach in terms of the national Premier Leagues and how that relates to the A-League, and then furthermore, how did that drill down into um, the SAP programs that we're actually looking to deliver within the NPL structure. Uh, some of you may already be working in the NPL, NPL structure, you may be working in the community, within community clubs that are linked to the NPL clubs, and that has an impact as well. So in terms of what we'll actually deliver this evening, we'll actually look to try and deliver some sessions that are that you can go away with, uh, can actually use in your own environment. They're, they're fairly basic and it's more about the, the process uh, and being able to facilitate and organize a training session so that it's fairly seamless. Um, at this time of year, especially for, for us in Canberra, with the winter months, we don't want the players to be spending too much time in between breaks and the transition between one component to the next. So we want to keep it going and keep the flow going as much as possible. Um, Specifically linked to the updated curriculum, uh, you may or may not be aware of the building blocks. In terms of the building blocks that, that are now in place, discovery phase, skill acquisition phase, game training phase and performance phase. The two building blocks that we'll work on tonight and in particular on passing practices, skill introduction or uh, skill trading or positioning games, depending on which building block you're working with, um, we'll just go through some, some fairly simple practices that you can actually use and it doesn't matter whether you're actually working in the skill acquisition phase which is for 9 to 13 year olds or you're working in the game training phase which is for 14 to 17 year olds and obviously the target age groups that we have here for this year's uh, Kanga Cup I think that's probably going to be a nice fit in terms of those practices that we have some of you may have seen these practices before some of you may already be working in this fashion as well but this is just an insight as to the way that we operate and in, how, in relation to the FFA exactly the way that we work together and on that national approach in terms of using the building blocks to keep it as simple as possible with the delivery of all of our programs. Um, we have our own teams that are playing in the Kanga Cup um, this year as well for the first time, uh, which is fantastic from our point of view to get those extra fixtures. So, um, and, and we're seeing it with obviously 275, 74, 75 teams. Uh, fantastic turnout and it, and it shows uh, where we're going as a nation in terms of football and the landscape of football and where it's at in comparison with the other codes. Obviously, brilliant time of year in terms of the World Cup as well. So what I've done is, uh, looking at this particular one, we've tried to identify uh, problems that we may have seen or trends that we may have seen in the World Cup as well. Trends that I've definitely uh, found with working with our own boys, the particular team that I work with, is the under 20s uh, team, uh, all of which are actually under 18. So they're only uh, 16, 17 uh, years of age, and they're currently playing in the Kanga Cup this week as well. Um, structured build up in terms of being able to play out, no problem at all. Combined, uh, in the preparation phase, being able to, to control possession, no problems at all. But the problems that we're starting to have, and in particular today with the game, one of the games that we had in the first uh, half, is we find it very, very difficult to break teams down in the final third, especially if a team plays with a compact, narrow defence. You will have seen Costa Rica against Holland, very, very similar. 
in terms of Holland found it very, very difficult to break them down in the final third. It has 64% possession, but in terms of actually breaking them down, etc., etc., found it very difficult. So when we talk about the skill acquisition plays, that's the functional game skills. So working on their first touch, running with the ball, striking the ball, 1v1, 1v1 in attack and defense, because if there's one attacker, there's always going to be one defender. That's the focus, their individual skills. And preparing those players as individuals in the with the functional game skills to then move into the game training phase, which then prepares them. Now they have those functional game skills to put those functional game skills into a team setting. And it's then about working with their individual player within that team setting as well. And providing them with not just the, the technical ability, but the tactical astuteness over a four year period. And that works, so it's four years in skill acquisition, four years in game training. So collectively then you have eight years of development of an individual player. We would like to think by the time they come out of that eight years are then polished off to go into the performance phase to be able to play at the performance level. You may or may have not already seen it here at the Kanga Cup. There's possibly coaches sometimes think that these players are already in the performance phase. And, and that's something that's a, an education process in terms of the coaches and the way we work through the system as well. And they're some of the issues that we face in our own space as well. But we're working with the clubs with workshops, uh, workshops sorry, very, very similar to these as well um, in, in our own space here in Canberra. So that's a little bit of background in terms of, of, of where we're at and then what we're going to look to do this evening. They're only going to be uh, snippets, so they're going to be sh short and sharp. So these sessions that we'll actually put on will transition from one to the next, but they'll only be condensed maybe into 10 minute slots. But you would possibly do it for 15, 20, 25 minutes, depending on the actual one you're doing. So when you're looking at it, try to look at it from the point of the view, it's just the organisation set up, how we actually deliver that session, short, sharp, but you might actually do it over an extended period of time, and how that might be able to lead into it as well. Just in terms of the organisation, uh, try, to, try to keep it as seamless as possible in terms of going from one practice to the next. In terms of working in your own space, the challenges that you may face, uh, in terms of the majority of the time you're working on a postage stamp. So you haven't got access to a quality surface, you haven't got access to goals for example. So you have to make do. So in terms of your planning and preparation, it can be a challenge. Uh, and no different to tonight, we were supposed to have 15 players for tonight's session, two have dropped out, so we've only got 13. So being able to adapt in terms of that planning and preparation, how do you plan to have, less, if you've got less players, have you got a plan B? If you've got more players, have you got a plan B, etc., etc. So they're the sort of things that we're working with as well, in terms of the orientation, we're actually, I'll go through that as we start to go through the sessions this evening. So what we'll do is, boys, if you just want to come in, just come in very quickly. We'll go straight into it. Um, we'll go from, from one practice to the next. Uh, I'll allow them in between each practice just to get a quick drinks break. And then we'll actually go back into the next component uh, of the, the, the session. So let's just uh, quickly, what we've got is we've got the white markers. And all I want is any, any four
to tackle. So all you're looking to do is just close off the space depending on where the pass comes from. Player in the middle will work for 30 seconds, then we'll rotate and back into the defender. The entire time you run, keep the ball on the outside, and those two groups in particular just be mindful of the players running into each other on the outside there. Okay? Goalkeepers are in already. Goalkeepers, you can use your hands if you want to. If you just want to use your feet, you can use your feet. But as you've got your gloves on, you can also use your hands as well. It doesn't matter if you're a defender in the middle or you're on the outside. All right? Ready to play then? Let's give it a go. Off we go. You ready? Phase now. So the skill acquisition phase, this would be a skill introduction, a passing practice related to a particular functional game skill. So looking at the practice the way that it's set up, this might actually be based on first touch or striking the ball. So looking at the way that we've got it set up, it's nice and tight, they're having to make decisions all the time. So with every single practice, regardless of whether it's in skill, into, uh, skill acquisition phase or game training, can we get perception, decision making and execution? So you will have seen now that there's only three players on the outside. But that forces the player to make a decision and the timing of their run to be able to support the pass. In terms of the way that we set ourselves up, we've always won, especially in the passing practice and the positioning games, or the skill introduction and the skill training, options left and right. So providing that player. Okay, just rotate the defenders around. The new defenders in, just hold the gear, and they're exactly the same thing. Hold it there just before you go. We're just getting warmed up, just getting into it. We're trying to make good decisions. So like I said, there is traffic in the middle. So how can you avoid bumping into somebody? Have the little scan. So have to look over the shoulder. In a game, who might that also be? The defender? So how can that player possibly support? So now, if I play in, just pass the ball to me, Bob. I play into it, pull into there, and there's a player tight to me just coming in here, press in there. How might he be able to support me now? What can he tell me? Man on, and then I might be able to just do what? Just bounce, but as I play in, bounce. Where's your run going to take you now? So good. So now we don't have to just go round in a circle one way. We can bounce out. So I might be able to bounce, or if I have that little look over and I can open up, just play into me again. I might be able to open up and then play into there. And off of that one, ball might get down the outside. So have the scan. If you can open up on your back foot and play down, no problems at all. If it is tight, tap it on. We'll just bounce out and we'll keep it moving. But those players need to communicate as well. The positioning and communication is very important to get the game going again. Play. Off we go. Play. Good. Good. Love it. Good. That is the point. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well done. So just in, in terms of this is just a warm up, so this is just getting them going, getting them ready, building them up, in terms we don't have to get them just to run around in circles, run around the pitch, we're getting straight into it. And we'll build it up and then we'll increase the tempo, etc, etc, as we go through. The other things as well is in terms of the, the information that I give, I don't want to be getting too bogged down in terms of body shape, where do they need to be, how many touches do they need to have, etc, etc. Let them figure out that themselves. So just in terms of facilitating the session, getting it going, nice and relaxed. Okay, and relax it there. Depending on the age group that you're working with, especially with the younger ones, do you need to do the dive flex? Possibly not. But there's no reason as to why you can't do it. 
because it's getting them into good habits early. So this might be a routine that you actually go through with the players and you go, you're more prescriptive in terms of actually taking them through a set routine. These players now are in game training phase and, and well advanced and actually work. These are the, sorry, these are the ACTAS boys. So these are our MCC boys and some of the skiller, senior Skilleroos as well, under 14 state team that will go to Coffs Harbour this year. Um, so they're already working with uh, the, the trainers over at ACTAS, being put through their own core stability, individual periodization, stretches, etc., etc. So they know their bodies, they know their routine that they've been through. But in terms of the younger ones, there's no reason as to why you can't do this. Off we go again, Flex! No reason as to why you can't do this and work with these players and getting them into a good mindset nice and early and good habits nice and early as well. say when you relate it to the um, when you relate it to the skill acquisition phase, first touch and strike in the ball possibly. Another way, another way you might actually be able to do it is if you were doing running with the ball is that they have to run into the space, into the spare marker before they can pass the ball. So there's different options that you can actually work with, but it's what suits you. Good, what's that ball do? Focus and the drive within the skill acquisition phase in terms of your delivery to the players 
would possibly be first touch. Emphasize first touch, first touch, first touch, first touch. So by the time they walk away from the end of the session, they pretty much know or they figured out that this session's all about first touch. And then how do you seamlessly go through from one to the next? The same in the, in the game training phase, you might actually be identifying a problem that you've come, you've had, um, or as part of your linear pathway in your development, and then it's just working in that particular fashion as well. But I'll touch on that as we start to move through. This is more related to, I would say, the skill acquisition phase with this particular setup here. All right, so what we'll do now is what I want to do is we're going to change this, we're going to go into a different account. We've now got bridge. All I want now is the suppliers, players, and uh, the
In terms of competition now, no one wants to defend, so I don't even have to tell them about tempo and making sure that the ball speed is good, because everyone wants to be the attacker, no one wants to be the defender, and then all I've done is, is just put in a few little uh, disguise uh, restrictions in terms of getting them to give me 110% all the time, in terms of they've got five seconds. Another defender go in, another defender in, oh I don't need one, there you go, switch it over, three in, ready to go. And then again in terms of going stepping up and stepping down, you can manage that in terms of how many defenders you send in. If it's too easy or it's too difficult, you might only start with one defender. And then with the way that you would possibly manage that, the two boys at the end who are standing still, standing around, you might just get them just to knock the ball back and forth to each other so they're still actually active. So they're actively resting, but they're not standing there like mannequins. Quick up! Five seconds! Go! Quick! Australia against Holland game, that's probably the best we've ever played. 
in BPI. We're able to collectively press intelligently at the right time. And that's where it relates to this possibly, but where that would fit in in your periodization, again, it's a little bit more advanced. Other things that we could possibly do now is actually move the markers, take the markers away in the middle, so there are no zones now. And then that nicely leads into now it being a passing practice into a positioning game. And the way we manage that, we can change that about as well. Okay, just relax it there. In, uh, just in terms of where we're at, that's, uh, that's two, two passing practices uh, that I would probably aim more towards using in the, the skill acquisition phase um, in terms of uh, the, the individual skill that I've uh, just targeted there, which is striking the ball on, and first touch. In terms of passing practices now, related to the game training phase, uh, I mentioned at the start of the session that uh, it's about possibly identifying a problem and coming up with a solution. In terms of the four main moments in the game training phase, uh, uh, we, we, sorry, four main moments of the game, and that linear pathway in terms of your development, how you'll actually now split those as well, if you're working in the NPL environment, um, is you might then have be looking at something in a, in a certain area of the field. So I said at the start of the session that we targeted that we're very, very good at structured build-up. So we're able to play out from the back comfortably. We're able to get the ball from the back third to our middle third very, very comfortably. Control possession in the middle third. Where we let ourselves down is in the final third. So combining to create goal-scoring opportunities, possibly. That's just one of many. So in terms of the setup and the orientation again, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible to be able to move from that. But we've now got more position specific. So now we're working with possibly the blue team being a back four, and then the blue team being a middle three. So back four, middle three, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. So the numbering system. This bit might be something that you're aware of as well, or possibly not. The numbering system in the updated curriculum. The numbering system it was in the original curriculum as well, but it's something that, again, that's been applied nationally. The reason that we apply that nationally is because it makes it very, very easy when we go to the National Youth Championships and the Institute Challenge, and in terms of selection process and identification process, process the national selectors are able to go, I like you two, I like you three, I like you four, I like you five, etc., etc. So instead of having to worry about names, it's position specific in terms of the players that they're actually identifying as well. Um, so that makes it a lot easier on a, on a national scale to be able to work with that numbering system. And in terms of the formation, uh, massive misconception that it's all about the 1-4-3-3. Three, three. And you have to play 1-4-3-3. Three, three. Um, that's the preferred formation in terms of development because we see it as being the best spread across the pitch through all three thirds and giving us many, many options to be able to play in triangles and have options left, right, middle and far. So looking again, that's the way that we'll work with that numbering system. So we've got the back four. So now I'll, I'll just demonstrate the numbering system the way that it works because these boys are all over it because we apply this and everything. So all I want is a back four. Back four, go and stand on your bib and put your bib on for me. Two goalkeepers just go to the behind the back four. Actually, Ben, what I'll do is I'll get you to come up the top end. You can actually serve at the top end. Oh. Yeah, it's Steve, it's your thing. All right, can I get a, a middle... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. A middle three for the white team. Six, eight, ten, and a number nine for the white team. And then can I get... Thank you. 
team that I would possibly be working with or focusing on more would be the white team, the white team uh, having the six base prepared, and then the remission player in here. So again, in terms of the problem that we've identified, manage it. So again, you expect to have 15 turn up. You don't. You have 13, two of which are your goalkeepers. How are you going to manage that to tr still try and get some realism out the game? If you had the extra players, you might drop other players in as well. So you might have full backs, or you might have a number seven on the far side also. So the way we'll, we'll look to do this is article number nine, yeah? We've got a plan on the release of marker. And then stand on your markers. White team on the green markers, the blue team are on there, and on the white markers. And uh, what I'll try to do is. So these are just, a, we're not actually going to go, we're not actually going to go into the, the game training component, this is just a passing practice. So I've got no issues with putting my goalkeeper into that position because our goalkeepers still need to be able to have good first touch and to be able to use their feet. And in terms of our playing style statement from a national scale, that's exactly what we're looking for. Probably one of the main reasons Mark Schwarzer didn't make it to the World Cup this time round is because he can't actually use his feet. And you've seen it with, with Chelsea possibly, that you might have your own opinion on that. All right. So the way that we're actually having it set up is I want to have uh, half the board down with this, <coughs> half the board um, with this. Just even them up. <laughs> so what we're going to look to do to start with, this is a passing pra uh, practice position specific. The blue team are just going to work together and the white team are going to work together. All I'm going to ask is Vince, we need a ball to fix. If you can pass to anyone you want, be on the white team. Don't take the ball around. Stay in there. All I want you to do is once you actually pass the ball, you start to you follow that path. And if you rotate around, you always fill in the spaces again. Yep? Understand that? Blue team, exactly the same thing. Ball starts with D. Team plays in to one of the blue team, pass wherever you want, follow your path. Team, you're the only player that doesn't follow your path. Stay where you are. Okay? <coughs> Both teams working at the same time. Both teams working at the same time. Pass and follow, pass and follow. Whites work together, blues work together. Team's the only one that's not allowed to rotate. Off you go, straight. Rotate, follow your path. Follow your path. Two 
right. So should anyone can rotate anywhere. I'm not, I'm not being prescriptive of where they go to. They make the decision based upon what they see. What they see and what they hear, that will dictate the pass that they play. Now we've got four balls working, everyone's working, the rotations are a lot quicker. We're having to make better decisions. It's still nice and tight and there's lots of movement, lots of traffic going on. But again, I keep going on about it, the PDE is always involved.
just in terms of moving, so just give it a, a couple of options in terms of passing practices. And in terms of the, the moving into the, the game training phase now, sorry, in skill acquisition there would be, there's three components. Skill introduction, which would be your passing, and uh, the skill training, which would be the middle part of the session where you would do all your teaching, get your coaching points across, and then the skill game at the end, by which you would then be hoping to see everything that you've worked on in the skill introduction and skill training come to life in the skill game. So then that's your opportunity to take a step back and just watch and observe. So in terms of your plan, prepare, that would be your conduct phase, and then you would evaluate to see whether it's actually happened. And if it hasn't happened as part of your evaluation, that's where you would go back and then go through that process again to possibly modify that session for next time round. So in terms of the updated curriculum, you should all, you'll, you'll all be able to get access to that on the uh, FFA website. So you, might, you possibly already have it, either as a hard copy or as a PDF. But they're just templates. What we're looking for now is for you to actually come up with your own uh, sessions based around those templates and see how it fits depending on what phase you're actually working in. So that's the, that's the skill, introdu uh, skill acquisition phase. Going into the game training phase, the components are slightly different in terms of its passing, positioning, game training, training game. So the positioning practice, which we're possibly in here, and this could be, this could be pulled apart completely now. Because in terms of the passing practice that I actually delivered, I identified that it was the uh, lack of ability to create goal scoring opportunities through combining in the final third. So be thinking now as the orientation of the field is fine, no problems at all. But what about the numbers and what we're really looking to achieve with this particular position in practice? But also be thinking about why have we split it into two separate positioning practices? Tighter, more opportunity for repetition, passing, uh, movement off the ball, keeps them moving all the time. Another option might be able to actually join and merge those two together and go with the passing practice, uh, similar to the passing practice that we had, but then you run, uh, run the risk of not getting as much repetition. And in terms of the positioning games, you're looking for opportunities for the player receiving the ball to have options left, right, middle and far as often as possible. So how do we recreate that with the numbers that you have and the objective of the session to ensure that you're getting that all the time. So in, in terms of the setup that we have here, I think it, it, it's you in your mind's eye as a coach, what you would come up with in terms of the numbers and the setup, etc., etc., uh, and, and how you actually manage that as well. Like I say, tonight is a challenge because we're, we're missing two players as well. Might be a little bit, but if we planned it and worked with it, should be able to work around that no problem at all. And I'll just demonstrate the last one, because we're almost, almost there now. The last one that we'll do is we'll actually merge the two together, just, just to see where we're at. But then, by doing merging the two together, that then leads nicely into the game training component. But again, this is where you would only be very, very limited in terms of your teaching moments. You would only get a few things across. But then you go into your game training, and that's where the, the teaching process takes over. That's where you're going to do the majority of your coaching. That's where you're going to get in, uh, actually give a team task, to give the player, uh, the, the team a task for this evening. Like I said, the thing that I identified was the lack of ability of combining to create goal scoring opportunities. So the team task for tonight, for tonight be, might be, how often can we get the ball into the, can we combine in the final third to create goal scoring opportunities? That may be a team task that I would address in the game training phase. Off the back of that team task, it would then be player tasks. It's an individual player task based around that team task. So what the individuals need to do, what are the, what are the cues, what are the movements, um, how do they present themselves, etc., etc., in order for us to achieve our global team task, what does an individual need to do within that team structure for that to be successful as well. And then the cues off of that, so the movement, and you've heard me already saying tonight about the positioning and communication as well. So lo loads of options, loads of things to think of, but I'm hoping there's just a few different examples and uh, I'll, I'll lead you into a direction. Like I say, we're, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, experience, I'm sure, here as coaches, and there may be things that you're thinking about now, but I possibly might do it a little bit differently. I might do it this way, and that's the great thing about coaches. 
is that we, we have our own opinions on how the game should be played, etc., etc., and that we're always learning, we're always evolving and coping, and I don't think, I'm almost certain that, that I'll never be the most 100% uh, complete as a coach, but it's just going through that process and learning from other people and seeing different practices, etc., etc., how do we always involve that uh, professional decision-making and execution all the time, and allowing players to, to learn through the game. Not for me to be the dictator. I've never dictated tonight. All I've tried to do is create an environment by which the game is actually leading them to make those decisions. So I'm facilitating the session in a particular way by which they are learning indirectly. But not by me being regimental and telling them this is how you have to do it, this is what you need to do. All I'm doing is managing an environment and setting my session up because I've thought about that whole process of exactly what I want to achieve from the session and then just set it up in that, in that manner. And they'll work it out and, and, and they'll get there. Some will get there quicker than others and, that, and that's just uh, something that, that you deal with as well. And then within your own environment, you might be in a situation where you have somebody that's down here and somebody that's up here. And that in itself is a challenge. So the environment that we're in with our particular programs is we're, we're, we're relatively privileged because it's the best with the best in our particular federation. So the best with the best, or perceived to be the best with the best, training and playing together. But when you go down to community level, you may have a player that's up here and a player down here, and that's how do you actually how do you actually work those sessions? How do you merge it? And that's where sometimes we can get so bogged down on the player that's down here, and we spend all the time and the focus with that player because we don't think that they're doing it right where possibly you might need to take a step back and say, how do I manage this environment and make sure that that player is getting as much information, although they're down here, but it's relative to them, and that player is getting exactly the same information, correct information based upon the level that they're at as well. And that, that's an art of a coach as well to be able to do that. But like I say, we're in a more of an advantage, uh, at an advantage because what it is perceived to be the best of the best. But the, the, the great thing is, is that and it's not just with this age group. I did a workshop. Uh, last month, and we used one of the NPL clubs at under 14 level. But one of the, the, the great things about uh, managing these sessions, aside from perhaps sort of wandering around and sort of getting the balls and recycling the balls, I haven't said nothing to these, but they're still playing, they're still working it out for themselves. Football's still being played, therefore, football's hopefully they're being taught uh, and learned, etc. etc. But it's just through setting that up, that managing that environment all the time. We, we could actually go in and be more prescriptive, but we've just set up a small practice and they'll play. And they'll keep playing until we tell them to stop. And that's the great thing with actually setting the sessions up uh, for what we, we do. Okay, boys, just relax in there. Just relax in there. Just pick up the markers for me. Just pick up the markers. Bring the ball in. And then before you know it, that's an hour gone already. So just in, in terms of what I've actually the, delivered this evening, is there any questions off the back of that? Anyone got any questions at all? No, all freezing cold and want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing jumps out at all. All right, that, that's, that's fine. That's no problem at all. Hopefully, um, maybe I've, I've explained it quite well, possibly. I don't know. Or maybe it is too cold. Uh, but, but, but like I say, I, I, I do appreciate you coming out this evening. I know that it is uh, the, the middle of winter for us, and, and like I say, there's a, there's a, there's a lot more registered. Uh, but hopefully you, you have got some value out of the, the practices, or if not necessarily the practices, just the process that we follow more than anything else uh, in terms of how we, how we set the sessions up, how we run the sessions, and how they relate to the updated curriculum, how they relate to the, uh, the building blocks, um, in terms of discovery phase, skill acquisition phase, game training phase, and performance phase, and how that relates then to the FFA um, and the capital football team model, and then how it's actually delivered as well. 
Um, it's, a, it's an ongoing discussion that both Neil, Neil Orr, um, who's the Game Development Manager, uh, Pat McCann, who's the, the ACTAS Head Coach, um, that we have a lot is in terms of what do we deliver? What do we deliver in terms of these workshops and, and who does it apply to? Um, and, and again, in relation to sort of like the community aspect um, and the advanced sort of the NPL, which is, is seeing more of the, the elitist programs now with where we're looking to head in terms of we ideally would like to see those further down the track as being fully functional skill acquisition programs and game training programs. It's how do you, what, what do you deliver and how do you actually deliver that? I still feel that there is value in, in, in giving the information and trying to, to get the message out there in terms of the FFA uh, updated curriculum. Uh, for the most part, the, the feedback is very, very positive. Uh, again, it can be uh, taken uh, as, it's, it's just making sure, sorry, that, we, that, that the coaches understand and, and the football fraternity as it is understands that they are just templates, they are just something to follow. We want coaches to be able to have their own um, their own ability to be able to come up with sessions themselves, and hopefully that gives you more sort of practical examples, etc., etc. And some of the session or some of the passing practices that you would have seen this evening are not even in the, the curriculum. So it's just trying to, to give uh, bits of drops, bits of information, plant seed, etc., etc., in terms of the updated curriculum and kind of like to say the process that we follow. Uh, Pat, do you want to add anything uh, to that? No? No? All good? All right, so uh, thank you very much for attending this evening. Uh, like I say, I hope you found some value uh, in, in what's actually been delivered. Uh, I will be out and about all week uh, around the traps uh, for, for the fixtures for the games. If you do see me around and you want to have a chat, or you've got any questions after this evening, then again, feel free to, to come up to me. If you, if you don't want to do it in the, in the public forum, then I'm more than happy to, to have a chat and discuss um, before you leave this evening, or like I say, if you see me around the, the grounds throughout the week. So, um, once again, thank you very much. What I'll do is I'll just leave them to it. Uh, thank you very much uh, to, to Pat's boys for, for coming out tonight and, and supporting us. Um, you know, some good, real quality talent there. Uh, who will be heading off to Japan very, very soon uh, to take part in a tournament, so, which is very, very good. So thank you very much for attending this evening. Look forward to seeing you around the traps. If you are locals, thank you very much for coming out again, and we'll look to see you very, very soon. Thank you very much.